As the primary uh, lending institution to Latin American countries, we at the IDB devote a lot of time to thinking about children and infant, uh, the whole aspects of early childhood development. And if one looks back and thinks about a conference like this three decades ago, anywhere in Latin America, few people would have known what we meant by early childhood development. Certainly there was a lot of focus on medical and educational experts who would be speaking about the importance of proper nutrition or stimulation in the first few years of life, uh, such as uh, early childhood development. But this wasn't an issue that was part of the government discussion. And when it came to policies that were centered on children, their focus was elsewhere. It was basically about the expansion of access to basic education, as well as to re the reduction of infant uh, mortality and maternal mortality. And overall, they did quite well. In fact, infant mortality has fallen by about 65% on the last three decades alone. A uh, Latin American child that is born today can expect to live eight years more than a child that was born in 1990. Yet primary school enrollment today is practically universal. We still have quality problems and we have gaping disparities, no question, but illiteracy has all by disappeared in our hemisphere. Now those are big steps towards developing our region's human capital. But we weren't doing much about the crucial early years when a child's future can be determined for better or for worse. Now paradoxically, around the same time, one of the projects that has become a touchstone for arguing the long-term advantages of early childhood development was taking place here in our region in Jamaica. Many of you in this room know about this, but the Jamaica Home Visits Program is something that is worth just remembering. Back in the late 80s, Jamaica launched a pilot project to test a variety of methods that would treat infants from stunted growth. They, they picked randomly about 140 children from very poor households. Some of those children got a nutritional su a supplement. Others got weekly home visits by social workers who trained their parents on how to best stimulate their infants. Others got nutritional supplements and home visits as well, and some got nothing. That experiment was done for two years. But most, and perhaps the most interesting aspect, was that those same researchers went back and looked at what happened 20 years later. What they found was that the kids who had home visits with and without nutritional supplements did much better in almost every aspect from uh, their participation in schools and how they achieved in tests to higher incomes. They re reported fewer problems with drugs and alcohol addition, addiction, and they had less problems with the law. Now that became the basis under which professor and economist James Heckman then went on to produce a paper that led to his winning the Nobel Prize. And many people started writing about the program of home visits in Jamaica. Now, there's an arc that links that pilot project that was done in Jamaica to what I know Brazil's plan wants to do and the minister is here to scale up Crianza Feliz, which is to complement the home visits of Bolsa Familia 
to conditional cash transfer programs that benefit over 30 million low-income households in Brazil. If Crianza Feliz succeeds, and a lot will depend on the quality of training that is provided to the army of potential trainers, in 20 years, we could probably look back to this program as a turning point, not only in the history of Brazil, but certainly in the larger discussion of the whole issue of early childhood development. Now, other countries in our region have been getting on board and recognizing the importance of early childhood development. I'm talking here about countries that are adopting cost-effective interventions, such as home visits. In the case of Peru or Uruguay or Bolivia, where our Aymara-speaking social workers use puppets and puppet shows to educate children and grown-ups on proper nutrition and parental care. Other countries have invested heavily in daycare centers and preschools. Chile, for instance, expanded its coverage by a factor of two over the past decade alone, while Ecuador expanded its own coverage by a factor of six. The brick and mortar approach is far more expensive than early stimulation programs, provided either at home or at health centers. But it has other advantages, or as economists would like to say, positive externalities. In the case of Rio, massively expanded access to daycare centers and preschool have done a very good job. And yet, while quality varies widely, one of the effects of expanding access to childcare on a massive scale was that it allowed female labor participation to grow by 27%, which naturally helped raise household incomes and reduce both poverty and inequality in the case of Rio. Now those are very encouraging trends, but at the regional level we still have big problems. About 44% of children between the ages of three and five are in preschool. 92% of infants in the crucial phase between zero and three years old do not have access to early childhood development programs. And as in many other aspects of life in Latin America, we still struggle with inequality. A child from a high income household is twice as likely to attend an early childhood development program than a child from a low income program. In the most extreme cases, children are looked after another minor or left alone at home, and that's the case of one in 20 Latin American kids. So the risk, of course, is that those disparities will only entrench economic and social inequality. And as everyone knows, infants need more than care. They require high quality stimulation to develop their language skills and their cognitive potential. Research shows that children of mothers with low levels of education recognize fewer than half the words recognized by children of better educated mothers. The bottom line is that how children interact with adult caregivers at home or at daycare facilities makes all the difference. So we need to push harder this agenda of early childhood development. In Latin American countries, we still spend half the average of OECD countries. And our governments fully understand the advantage of early childhood development, but the recognition has been slow in turning into a bigger slice of our educational budget. Our research shows that for every dollar spent on children under the age of five, we still devote more than three dollars to children of primary school age. And that's partly the explanation of why the so-called PISA scores, Latin American countries in general, are not at the front of the pack, but rather at the end of the pack. His Majesty talked to us about what the private business can do, and I think this is a fundamental issue. We've seen a number of examples, 
some of the big retailing companies like Exito from Colombia operating in four different countries is already doing fundamental programs in this direction. And I invite all the business community who is here to really invest in really changing the lives of so many of our children and therefore changing our future. Thank you very much.